And welcome to another Adobe Live here in the UK with myself, Tony Homer, and day two with our fab guest, the amazing Maddie Belwar. How are you doing, Maddie? Oh, thank you so much for that introduction. I'm doing great. It's awesome to be here again. Um, hi, everybody. <laughs> it's fab to see you. Absolutely fabulous to see you. And I was watching yesterday. It looked great. So we'll chat a bit more about that in a second but first of all I've got to say if you're watching on YouTube that's fine you can watch on YouTube if you like but you can't get involved in the chat because no that's not the chat you're looking for you need the chat behance.net slash adobe live where you can join some fabulous people like General Kenobi, Andreas and also Mirko. Yulia's here hey Yulia and we've got some guy called Tim in the background there. I think there's another Maddie hovering around in there somewhere as well. Sarah and Oliver and Dia and all of these different great, great folks uh, with us. So come along and join us there. So Maddie, 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 <laughs> yesterday yes. you were drawing this fabulous bunny and the mice it's very, it's very ghibli that bunny by the way oh, i really thank you. really like it very much like it and so <laughs> we're going to progress on from where you were yesterday right yes fantastic yes yes okay. so i didn't do anything off stream other than sort of organize my layers a little bit and named them for anybody who likes to read over here what's on what layer <laughs> um we get a lot of that yeah <laughs> <laughs> So for anyone who likes that, I've organized it for you. Um, but yeah, I uh, between yesterday and today, you know, taking a fresh look at it, it's nice to come back in and um, yeah, just it, it, all of a sudden, some things that you didn't notice the day before are now really um, more more obvious. So for me, for example, one of the things I want to do is uh, take this moss back here on the log and extend it over. Um, I think okay. it'll be easier to see the mice kind of pop out if the background behind them is green. So. That'll be my first thing that we jump into. Yeah. And you actually showed a neat trick yesterday for value, uh, for looking at values with uh, changing the. Yes. Um, changing the black and white. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Did I show really that for anybody? If anybody wasn't here yesterday. Yeah, you can do. Yeah. Just in case they missed it. Cause it, I thought that was a really good way of doing it. I have a oh, slightly different you. way of doing it, but yeah. I like your way a lot. Changing the working profile. Really good. Yeah, so you can, um, for anybody who wants to set this up as a shortcut, um, because it's really easy after you do that, um, you just go to View, uh, Proof Setup, Custom, and then um, under the device to simulate here, this is the only thing you have to change, is just select on the drop down working gray dot gain 20%, and then click OK. And then after you do that, every time you um, hit Control Y on your keyboard, it'll turn your painting into black and white. And one really cool thing about that is you can still color pick and paint um in color even though you're looking at it in black and white so yeah no it was a really neat trick i normally do that with a layer so i have a layer set to the color blending mode yes. or to luminosity blending mode whichever whichever takes my mood at the time <laughs> and um and do it that way but your way so much more elegant especially if you're not doing sort of print proofing all the time that's a great way awesome. to do it I you can do it the shortcut i love it Exactly. I'm going to adopt it and I'm going to always think of you whenever Aww. I'm doing it. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, Great I used to tip. do it with the color layer too. And then um, to be honest, I, I can't remember where, sometimes when I'm streaming, you know, people suggest things to me. So yeah. maybe I learned it in stream, but um, once I learned that way, I, I stuck with it. Yeah. So I'm just going to bring this green down here. I'm using a um, charcoal texture brush. I'm just going to bring that down until it until it looks until it feels right. I love it. I love that you work so quickly as well. You're so, you know, it's so so good. Thank you. 
Yeah. People suggest things to me when I'm streaming too. Like, <laughs> have you ever considered another job? Or <laughs> <laughs> they don't really. I've got some great people. <laughs> I haven't got as many as you, but I've got some great people. Um, I'm going to grab a brush that has a, a lot of texture to it just because I was sitting there making little brush strokes and then I thought, oh, I have something that can do that more quickly. So we'll use this brush to give a little mossy texture. It's working really well. I love these um, like gritty texture brushes lately. That's my mm. new <laughs> passion. <laughs> well, it makes for quick work, right? It's the... Mm. You can get a lot of that like illusion of detail, a lot of little, little bit, bit of noise in there. All right, so I feel a better about that. Um, the other thing that I wanted to talk about from yesterday to today, we were playing with the idea of adding, um, let me move this over so you can see, a line with, um, using like a little bit more of a, of a gritty brush and, um, I, I just between yesterday and today, I kind of decided I, I don't love it. So I think okay. I'm going to get rid of that layer and Absolutely. keep going <laughs> from there. <laughs> <laughs> so that yeah. happens sometimes. So let's see. Next steps. I want to go to sort of each area. Um, so being like the grass, the log, the background, the mice, kind of going between the objects and just yep. kind of cleaning them up, starting to detail things, add a little bit more interest to each one. So when you're when you're not streaming and when you're not working, do you spend a lot of time in nature? Because you do seem to have those yes. sensibilities that you know. And that um, thank you. I do. I love to. It's one of my um, biggest passions or hobbies. And you know, it is related to my art. I guess it's like kind of separate but related. But yeah. I love to go um, walking in nature, and I feel very lucky because where I live in the Netherlands, there are a lot of forest parks and areas to walk or ride your bike where you can really be immersed in green, especially in the summer. It's so beautiful. No, and the Netherlands, of course, famous for cycling and, and has great places to ride and great protections afforded to cyclists, which is fantastic, which yes. is we're kind of catching on over here a little bit. But, but as usual, people with cars resistant. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it takes time, but um, yeah. that is a very interesting topic. And I'm after living here, I'm a little bit more passionate about it. I do think that, um, yeah, there's a lot of wonderful things about having the kind of accessibility that you can get um, for people. Again, accessibility, if you can, um, you know, ride a bike, then that's there's a lot of awesome things about it health wise and financially and environment and everything. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna to go to the mice now. I just did a little bit of um, sort of shading in the grass. I'm gonna to go to the mice and I have a brush that I love. It's a um, crayon textured brush I wanna to use to give their fur a little bit more, um, I don't know, scruffy texture to it. <laughs> yeah, and these are, are these brushes from your own sets? They're from... Yes, the brushes yeah. I'm using it, um, here are for, I, I made a set specifically when I started getting into um, painting in this style, I wanted some more of those authentic textures. So I scanned yeah. a bunch of um, paintings and scribbles and stuff like that. And I made this um, children's book illustration set. That's so cute. Um, Yulia, by the way, in the chat saying, uh, nature is the best inspiration, agreed. Yes. It just, it really makes you feel good to spend time in nature. Like, even if you don't realize it, even if you don't necessarily realize that you're feeling stressed sometimes, um, you know, you go for a walk or something like that. And all of a sudden you're like, okay, you have just a better outlook. It's more real, right? I mean, that's the way, that's the way we've, we've been for a long, long time. Yeah. And to connect, reconnect to that is lovely. Fresh air and the sun. Yeah. Do you know, one of the best jobs I ever had personally was i worked for it doesn't exist anymore it's called the wildlife trust but i used to work for the royal society for nature conservation um when i first came out of college as an illustrator in their education department and we used to go uh on sunny days and just go to the reserves and just have a picnic out there Aww. it was working it was lovely the money was terrible you really had to do the <laughs> job for the love of it yeah <laughs> but, but just to be connected like that was was just wonderful I really loved that job. 
so nice. you're pulling that together so beautifully thank you steve saying in the chat uh, these are really merry mice <laughs> yes thank you they're very excited about spring they're having yeah. a whole ceremony yeah. And back on the bikes, uh, Mothership is saying, uh, oh, hi, Mothership, by the way, I saw you in here yesterday. Uh, people are very resistant in the US as well. Riding bikes can be a challenge. It can. In fact, for, for lots of things involving wheels that it's it's that aren't powered by some sort of engine, it, it can be a challenge. But, you know, that will change eventually. <laughs> Tim's just saying, was that after your career as a kalimba tuner? <laughs> Right. <laughs> I don't even know what a kalimba tuner is, but there you go. The, uh, it's a big joke with Tim because I've done lots and lots of side gigs throughout my life. <laughs> Tim Tim likes to invent different careers for me. That's funny. The best one is backing dancer for Madonna. That's the, <laughs> which is the one that's least likely out of all the suggestions he's got. <laughs> Including a kalimba tuner, that's more likely. <laughs> uh, Mark saying, sounds a bit like architecture. You do it for love, not money. Oh, okay. There's some great architecture based on nature. I love. Do you, are you a Gaudi fan? Do you like Anthony Gaudi's architecture? Yeah. I mean, Barcelona is just one huge Gaudi, <laughs> Gaudi I exhibition. I hope I can visit there someday. I'm sure it will happen, but... I haven't seen it myself. Oh, yet. man, you should totally go to Off if you can. That's in just a few weeks. Oh, really? Off in Barcelona. You should go. Oh, I'll have to look into it. Yeah. <laughs> Julia, Julia's saying that was before Tony became a Batman pajama model. Oh, oh goodness. dear, oh dear. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Maddie did warn you. And, and you've been on stream with me before. <laughs> Doris oh, yeah. is saying she loves your illustration style. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. I'm going to add some, uh, I have some stamps um, that I made, stamp brushes uh, for some things we can throw in the background, just cute little um, plants and I'll show you, I'll show you what I mean. Yeah. So I have some things like this that I made with, um, again, crayons and scanned them. Oops, let me bring that layer so you can see it. Um, yeah, just a little uh, thing like this. So we can maybe put some in the background. Yeah, just to, t yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, something like that. So I'll just pull that behind the, we'll see where, where it'll fit in. Maybe something like this, mm. tilt it a little bit. We've got a couple different um, variations. Have you ever used Capture to create brushes? I haven't, but we were talking about a tiny bit yesterday. Um, mm. Maddie mentioned it, and I was thinking, hmm, I should play with that. <laughs> you should. It's yeah. so good. Oh, anything to do with um, making brushes, I'm interested mm. to at least try. You know, it's very. Oh, no, I think you'd love it. It's very addictive. That's the only thing is you end up making just, you know, I mean, you make a lot of brushes, right? Cool. But I mean, you'd make like a lot of, a lot of, a lot of brushes. <laughs> All right. It's, I honestly, this sounds great. <laughs> it's really easy. You know, it's so much easier than, than, you know, hanging out in the, I mean, all right, not as powerful as, as hanging out in the brush dynamics, but, but, you know. Yeah. But I wonder then you can. Once you make a brush, then you can kind of edit it further. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So I've got, um, so what I usually do with these is I have some that are a little bit more sharp edged. Like, let me show you an example. Um, I have one like this. So, um, Whereas these were made with a, up here, they were made with a crayon, very gritty texture. This is something more clean. So what I like to do is keep these cleaner ones. Um, if I use these, I'll generally use them like closer to the foreground because it'll be like more crisp and focused kind of thing. Yeah. And then I keep the um, more gritty, blurry kind of ones in the distance. So I'll add a couple more of those back here. Just when you had that in the foreground, I got a sudden sense that I'd actually stumbled across. Oh. 
you know, some sort of woodland ceremony that I wouldn't otherwise have seen. Just with that, Perfect. Just with that you know, it does look like you've suddenly peeked through some foliage and there you are. It's like, oh, wow, I didn't know bunnies and mice did that. <laughs> I love that. That's exactly the feeling. Um, yeah. Sometimes you, it takes a little bit of uh, almost bravery to cover up part of your painting. It can be tough to decide like what's going to be covered after you already worked on an area. Um, but it can, yeah, it can be really awesome. You got to mm. just commit to it. Absolutely. Sarah in the chat uh, saying interesting. She's using capture all the time. And hey, Bruce. Cool. Kirsty, I love Adobe Capture. It's an excellent piece of kit. Yep. Sarah's saying about 50% of her uh, Adobe Cloud space is made up of capture files, at least. Wow. wow. Now, is that also um, where you can take color palettes and things from mm -hmm. photos? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so you can do video looks, you can do color palettes, you can create uh, 3D materials for use in substance and other places, mm -hmm. um, including Adobe Illustrator now, strangely enough, uh, kind of. Um, the uh, Yeah, you can create vector shapes, you can create brushes for Photoshop and for Illustrator. Um, yeah, I have and to for Fresco, that. of course, Fresco does... Fresco can absorb, absorb both of those things, I think. Sandrine, she's made some cool ones for Illustrator just by taking a photo of ink brush strokes. Man, I, I went right down a rabbit hole with that. No pun intended with your current <laughs> illustration, Maddie. <laughs> the, um, I started doing things like I thought, hmm, there's some coffee grains. I wonder what happened if I just poured a little bit of water on those and left them there for an hour, and can I make a brush out of that? That's yes, so cool. Can. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I'm going to be constantly doing this now. <laughs> I can just, see it. <laughs> honestly, I, I thought, oh, here's a burnt stick. I'm going to run, I'm going to drag it across this piece of watercolor paper, you know, something with a decent tooth to pull some of that carbon off. Right. Can I make a brush out of that? Yes, you can. <laughs> That's so fun, though. I've, I have made brushes out of weird things, too. One of my favorite brushes is made out of a it's made from a photo of my wall that has like a rough texture yeah. and yeah, it works really well. It's got a, like a dry brushing sort of look to it, but that's no, it's fun. So good. Yeah. It's just that you've got, you know, you've got a device in your hand so you can just use the device, take the picture and then just crack on from there and make something. It's just such fun. And what I like about what I really like about it, Maddie, and what I think you'll like about it is when you're playing with the brush parameters inside of capture rather than doing what you do in photoshop where you have to sort of tweak something and then go and use it on the canvas and then go back and tweak it any brush that you've got inside of capture that you're working on changes dynamically based on what you've done with the brush stroke so as you move really? a slider mm, yeah <laughs> i'm really going good. to 100 percent. i'm going to try this out do it Angus right. is saying, nice to see all the textures building up. Oh, thank you. Mothership saying, a secret ceremony. That's, <laughs> that's a cool idea. So I'm adding some white flowers up here to the end of this little branch. Yep. Oh, Frank's just reminding me, Capture can get fonts as well. And then you're doing that. It's true, it can. Nice. Oh, that's, I wondered when the flowers were going to get some treatment. <laughs> going to give them a little bit of purple, blue um, kind of shadows. So you inspire lots of people. You've got a great following. What I'm, what I'm curious is who inspires you? Ooh. Who are you most inspired by? Oh, there are so many artists. I I mean, I think so a lot of people could probably guess that Studio Ghibli, um, yeah. those those artists and those, you know, gorgeous background illustrations have been a huge inspiration for me. Um, there are uh, a, a couple artists in particular that I think have been a big influence. Um, Nathan Fowkes and James Gurney are two big yeah. ones. Um, they both have like a lot of learning materials out there um, as well. And so... I've been, you know, 
I feel like I've learned a lot from them over the past years. Uh, there's an artist named Tiffany Mang. I love how she uses color. She was a big inspiration. Um, yeah, there's so many. And, you know, all the time I look on, you know, you're just browsing um, on social media, wherever, and you're just like, I feel like every time I, I browse through, I see something new that I'm just like, oh, 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 <laughs> like, you know, and it just makes you want to, I don't know, I, I all the time I want to try different styles and stuff. Um, it's just, it's hard something you see something awesome and you're like, oh, I want to try something like that or like mix a little bit of that in with what I do somehow, you know. That's the essence of creativity, right? Is taking something, remixing it and bring it into yeah. You know, yeah. So I'm going to play with the line a little bit here. If I put it back okay. up to full opacity, this is what we get, which is a sort of a different style with the line there. It's not bad or anything. It's just, um, I kind of want it to be a little more subtle. So there's a couple ways we can go about this. You know, you can lower the opacity. Um, you can, we can color the line a little bit. So can lock transparency and then choose colors here that are a little bit closer to um, color of the object that it's outlining. So it feels almost more like a shading than a than an outline in a way. Yeah. So might do something like this. I did this a little a little bit of this yesterday, um, but I think we can just kind of commit to this. I think this is what I'm going to do, and yeah. then. Um, sort of just paint on top, say paint the line into the artwork instead of trying to remove it just for time. I feel like this is a lot faster. Um, I think it can also look good, so. It's a great way to do it. I love it. It's amazing how much more glowy it looks <laughs> with the colored lines. Mm. And Kirsty's saying, it's a shame Adobe Capture you can't make watercolor brushes out of textures. Maybe not yet, you know, who knows? In the future, that'd be that'd be fun, though. I dare mm -hmm. say something like that, you know, before you know it. That's not a prediction, by the way. It's just a wish. Same as yeah. everybody else. Yeah, just putting it into the universe. Yeah. <laughs> just in case the capture team are watching and going like, oh, man, <laughs> I'm well, just on my great. break. <laughs> For a fresco, you know, it would be great. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Bruce is loving the white flowers. Oh, thank you. Um, so just making the outline of the mice a little bit more like a brown red color so it still defines them but it kind of fits their mm. look the bunny will go with like a purple purple gray yeah i think that's the people quite often when they're inking stuff up go straight away to black and black's like a really you know you want stuff that's near black i think but mm -hmm. has to have an element of color in it so you know or i say near black with a with a with a deep value to it and rather than saying black itself but anything approaching black i like to have a little bit of color in it yeah and that's a great thing about working with digital is um, when you're actually drawing the lines, you can do it in black if that's the easiest, because sometimes, you know, when you're mm -hmm. working, it's nice and clean to be able to see those lines, but then you can change it to whatever color you want. You know, you're not stuck with it being black just because that's the original, you know, color you chose. Another thing I, I was looking at uh, when you started off yesterday, that filling with some texture in the background to get started, because yeah. I normally start with a 50% gray. Um background mm -hmm. and work on a layer above that because that way I've got I can go up and down in the yes. body scale from there but I liked the idea of the texture so I've made yeah. a note to try that out cool I'm yeah. gonna sometimes start with a gradient as well to be fair if I've got a particular focal point in mind mm -hmm. I'll drop a gradient and then work from that that's that's a fairly common yeah practice. I also like sometimes just taking a brush that has like uh, color dynamics or something a little mm. crazy jitter to it and just kind of covering the you know scribbling and covering the page with that um because you get some wild uh marks <laughs> you can yeah. start on top of but it can spark something off right and that's the thing of being so free with it you don't have to you know it's it's great absolutely so I'm just trying to finish up with the, the line here. And I think there's a little bit down in the grass that I want to 
um, make green, and then I think we're good with the hmm. line. That mouse balancing on the stem. This is Sarah saying that mouse balancing on the stem is so cute. It really directs your gaze <laughs> oh, towards the scene. Thank you. I'm so glad you said that because that one, when I was making the sketch, I wasn't sure about it because the little, um, I don't know, I just struggled with the positioning because he was like in a little bit of a different pose. And I was like, I don't know if it works. So I'm glad. I'm oh, glad no, that's one. That's I mean, that's like a real master's technique. That is for for leading the eye of the viewer yeah. into the composition. It's a, and it's subtle. It's uh, no, I think it's lovely. Uh, Sandrine's saying, I have special colour libraries of near blacks. That's something I learned lately before everything was black. <laughs> 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 oh, before, sorry, but before everything black was 255, 255, 255. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you mean zero, zero, zero? Just out of interest. I think you do. 255, 255, 255 is whacked. Or if you want it in hexadecimal, FF, FF, FF. <laughs> <laughs> Love the color element, elements for the brush. Uh, and also I did see somebody saying, loving the line color treatment, that's Angus. Thank you. Um, I think I'm gonna do a little bit more texturing on the, the wood of the log and the moss, things like that. So that'll be where we go next. I have some brushes that are um, sort of like organic marks. So for example, just like little crayon, marks and then scattered yeah. so you don't have to make each individual mark so over here and just give a little more texture so yulia who's in the chat is one of our um hosts good great friend of mine uh, and and Tim's, but she's one of our hosts in Germany, Maddie. You ought to check out some of her stuff. Julia Ziga. Cool. Thank she's you. A Hi, Julia. <laughs> she's a, a traditional and uh, and digital artist as well. And crazily enough, I saw her sculpting on her own live stream last week. She's actually doing sculpture. <laughs> That's awesome. Like real, like traditional sculpting, sculpting. Yeah, she's working on a children's book and she's actually bringing this character to life, which is a good, I thought it was the so only cool. person in the world who just rubbed clay together to make something so that I could appreciate the way light hits it. But I've watched her doing it. It's fantastic. And she's loads better than me. But... Maybe we can make this look a little bit more fluffy. finding random little pieces of line that I want to mm. erase. <laughs> That's the thing. I think somebody was asking yesterday about, you know, about when you, when you, uh, when you know something's finished. You know, yes. that's a that's a tricky, tricky thing. And then, then there was also someone in the chat who's obviously a fan of yours saying, you know, when the clock stops, it's done. <laughs> yeah. You know, which is that's the great I love that. I got that timer thing after watching you doing it, oh, by the cool. way. The uh I don't use it live, but I just use it sometimes to, you know, set something going. The yeah. uh, you know, set I set myself like 15 minutes. I'm gonna work on this for 15 minutes, see what happens. That's great. Yeah. You know, so get a timer going that way and see if it sparks anything, forcing myself to work in, in time constraints. Um, but no, I, I know, I think when you're finished, that one of the ways of, of working out when you're finished is if there's nothing else you can take away. Nothing else you can take away. Yeah. Rather than adding. So nothing's like things. wrong or nothing's <clears throat> bothering you, I guess. Yeah, that, yeah. So there's nothing more you can remove. To, yeah. To make. I think I really I, I do relate to that because I feel like usually when I'm when I'm doing messing around with stuff, it's because it's like I see something I'm like, oh, I want to add something or I want to fix something there. Mm -hmm. And then eventually that feeling kind of fades and you can yeah. look at the picture and be at peace. And then that's when you're like, it's done. Also, full transparency. If I took my own advice, I'd be excellent. <laughs> <laughs> 
So true. A lot of times when people ask me questions and I'll answer them, but I'm thinking, you know what I mean? It's like, that's also me trying to remind myself those things, you know, that these are good practices and stuff, but it's not always easy to do them. Yeah. Angus in the chat. Yulia's Tony character sketches were brilliant. Hey, Angus, I'm a I'm a sticker on Telegram, dude. <laughs> which is excellent. And Yulia is saying Tony is an easy subject, especially in Batman pajamas. Actually, Yulia has drawn Batman. She's seen me in my Batman pajamas. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> when we we're on FaceTime, just to point that out. Yes. <laughs> they, um, <laughs> and uh, she included it in one of her live streams. It was just like a little <laughs> nod to my Batman pajamas. Oh, I do that's have awesome. Batman pajamas. <laughs> I have several pairs of Batman pajamas. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Kirsty's right. saying one way to finish is when you ask for a second opinion from one of your family members. Ooh, I never ask them. <laughs> <laughs> what That's do they a know? Tough one. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I do it, really. It could depend because sometimes you have like very you know sometimes you'll have people that are critical and sometimes you'll have people that are very supportive so even if it's a big mistake in there they're going to be like i love it <laughs> so i don't know i guess if you know that they're um if you guys have the same taste that jives that you can ask their yeah. opinion <laughs> that's the, actually sometimes having somebody look at your work who has no clue what it's for or what it's about or why you're doing it it's not entirely a bad thing because they that's spot true. things that you might you know, that you might have overlooked. Like, why is that pointing that way? You know, mm -hmm. think, oh, yeah. <laughs> so true. Absolutely. I'm just adding some grasses in between um, the flat grass at the bottom and the, the um, log, just, you know, to kind of soften that mm. transition. Maybe add some um, little grasses coming up in front of the, the bunny to make it look, you know, like it's settled in the grass a little bit. I'm gonna try that, see if we like it. <laughs> Sarah wants to know, how do, I how do I not have the Tony stickers installed yet? It, actually, it's just one sticker. <laughs> I've got to finish the other one. I've not finished it. The, um, but it's about there, I don't know. I'll, try, I'll find it for you and tell you uh, how to get it. It's me as a nun. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, as you do. Uh huh. Oh, there it is. It's TDN. Search TDN. I've, hopefully, you can find it just there. The um. Let me just see if I can get a preview of that up. Oh, I'd have to keep my finger on it for you to see it, but I don't know how well you can see that, Maddie. Ah, okay. I can see like the main shape of it. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Anyway, back on the real, back in the real world. <laughs> <laughs> uh, artists are their own worst enemy as you can never be satisfied with the final image. Well, there's some, yeah, you can. I think you can. Yeah. I get I where you're coming so. from, Tony J, but uh, I think you can. But it is difficult sometimes. You're like, mm -hmm. mm, and then you walk away, and then you come back, and oh, there's a thing. Uh, and Tim, this is another side swipe from Tim, I think, or maybe they work for you, and they have to like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Two of my daughters and my wife work for me, Maddie. Okay. So yeah, they kind of do have to like it. Yeah. Or I have a tantrum. Uh, Sarah is saying, uh, depends. Unhelpful, friendly feedback can be really destructive. I think you have to take it in the way it's, you know, in the way it is. Don't let it wash over you. Be like a rock in a river. There you go. Yeah, I guess you have to, like you said, um, just take it as a suggestion, not, you know, in the end, you're the one in charge of your own artwork and yeah. it might be that you disagree just because someone gives a feedback doesn't mean that they're correct you know yeah. it's just their opinion so you can just kind of take it with a grain of salt and decide if you want to do anything with that or not it can, it can be hard sometimes you know mm. 
But yes, no, that's that sound. Uh, Sandrine saying, I'd rather ask friends, and I have many times, than my family members, to be honest. Yes, your friends are going to be real. I think. And we're getting loads of links across the things from another one of your fans here, Robert Van Everg. Oh, thank you. That's your art station links. Do you know one of my favourite times to see your work? As you, uh, I've told you already that Wednesday afternoons, I quite often put your stream on the telly in here. Sometimes I can go, you know, it's in front of me on a computer and I can pop into the chat. But otherwise, it's just in the background and I can just stop for a minute, watch you working. But the things I like when you do Halloween things, I love oh, them. Halloween is just, it's just such a fun time mm. of year and fun holiday. I love the mood. Yep. Same. All right, I think I'm at the point where I'm going to, I kind of want to not necessarily merge layers, but like treat it as it's merged. Mm -hmm. I do this a lot. Um, so what I, what, what I think I'll keep separate is just these um, foreground plants. They don't really need to be permanently where they are. I'd like to be able to move them around, mm -hmm. but everything else under there, um, I think what I'm going to do is make a new layer and then go to image, apply image. So then we get... Um, basically a merged version of everything below. Mm. So I can keep all these layers if I do find that I want to go back and have them. Um, but I'm just going to continue painting from here on this one um, completed flattened image, I think. You don't use the, you don't use the claw shortcut. <laughs> How do you do it? <laughs> <laughs> so you, you get your layer visibility the way you want it. Mm -hmm. right? And then park yourself on the topmost layer. And then it's Shift Alt Control E. Okay. And that's why it's called the claw because you have to like go. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I'm just gonna go to the edit. <laughs> <laughs> Your way works. You know, it was just oh as quick. <laughs> no, I love, I love keyboard shortcuts. I've yeah. reprogrammed a lot of them to be easier for myself because some of them, yeah. yeah, exactly, it's like that. But that one. No. <laughs> All right. the other, then uh, the other way I'm, I personally I might approach that is I'd smart object all the other layers and just have it in a separate document. But that that creates a whole thing if you need to go back into it. Yours is much more efficient, I think, in this particular case. I wonder because I, I I know that it's it's just kind of what I found that I like to do. I'm not sure mm. if it's you know there might be a there might be a better way. There's always so many ways to do something in Photoshop, <laughs> you know. So many ways to do the same thing. So I'm using yeah. curves right now and I'm just kind of fiddling with it to see um, if I can change the values in a way that I that I like. Sometimes I just mess with a bunch of anger points here and just kind of drag them around until it magically looks better. <laughs> just eyeballing it. Every time somebody says, I'm just going to fiddle with it, my mind immediately goes to the cartoon show Teen Titans. Really? Yeah, man, I love that show. <laughs> and there's a there's a char character Beast Boy, just in case Aaron is. He's got a thing on his little communicator that says "fiddle with it, don't fiddle with it," and he's like going, "Oh yes, no, yes, no." <laughs> I don't know why it's just it's wrecks me forever on that uh, <laughs> that simple phrase. Um, I'm also going to look at selective color. This is one of my favorite adjustment layer tools to use because it's super powerful and you can mm. really, really change things and make your colors feel a lot um, more unified or, mm. you know, closer to what you had in mind sometimes. This bunny is very humbled by being the new monarch. Oh. Yes. <laughs> and actually, Steve is saying, will there be snacks and drinks at this coronation? Well, that's the great thing, Steve, about being a woodland creature. Later on, you can eat your crown. <laughs> True. <laughs> Get some berries, fruits and berries and seeds. Sandra is saying, shut up and take my sticker money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, so just looking at this before and after. It's interesting. Sometimes um, it changes the values a lot. When you mess with those things, the um, selective color. Yeah. So I think I think I like this. It's a little bit more. Um, 
yeah, it's just a little bit more the color scheme that I was looking for. The mice are a little bit more towards yellow than uh, rather than red brown. So no, I like it. So I will sometimes just merge these. I know that's not the point of adjustment layers, <laughs> being able to change them later. But sometimes when I know I like it, I just merge to, um, I don't know, keeps me in a better flow. Yep. Yeah, just commit. <laughs> and it's the, yeah, that's the thing. It's decisive, right? You think, right, because otherwise you're thinking, oh, if I go back, I just yeah. pull that slider a little bit more to the left or to the right. Exactly. You know. Always have that in the back of your head. Well, I could just... Halloween. <laughs> Excellent. You're saying do the claw. The claw shortcut. So good. That's Jane. Hey, Jane in the chat. Picked up a trick there. That's nice. Um, for my shortcuts, I always just use my left hand on the keyboard the whole time. I think that's probably pretty common. So mm. I had to reprogram a lot of things that used both hands or were on the right hand side of the keyboard. So everything is over there. Do you, you're working on a Wacom, right? Yes. Yeah. Do you use the express keys thingy? No, I don't. Now, no. here's the thing. Neither do I. I think it's nice. But the fact that I have to remember where things are on using it, mm -hmm. the, I've got four Cintiqs in here and I have none of them <laughs> use the express keys. It's just that I was always thinking, well, you know, for a while with the different models, they kept changing where the buttons were. Yeah. And I was thinking like, I don't want to have to relearn all these keyboard shortcuts. And if you use the keyboard, that's pretty much going to stay the same. So yeah. you're safe. Yeah. So that good, was my good logic. Thought. Yeah. <laughs> I've got, um, I use a different thing when I'm working mobile now. So whenever I go away, I, because obviously a Cintiq is a bit of a hefty carry, yes. you know, to go around. I'm using a tablet from a company called Sense Labs and they have their own quick keys thing. And do you know what I really love about it? It's got an LED display. So it tells you what the buttons are assigned to. Oh, cool. It's epic. I've heard of that. Um, I was curious about them actually, because I didn't know anyone who had one. Mm. Oh, that's nice. I wish to I hear. had. One. I wish I had it here. It's at home. Um, but the uh, yeah, I I'm a I'm a fan. That's very cool. Mm. Yeah, it's nice to see new um, hardware coming out, like more more options and new technology. It's Absolutely just crazy. I'm just doing little scribbles down here for some grasses <laughs> and bring these back in. The thing is still, people are still having the odd chat about uh, people looking at their work. <laughs> <laughs> and Yulia's saying, thank you for your brutal honesty, grandma. <laughs> <laughs> no, grandma. <laughs> And immediately after that, Sarah, but Sarah again saying, I sometimes wonder if the Adobe team just adds another absolutely obscure shortcut simply as an Easter egg for Tony to find. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to imagine that's the truth. <laughs> Kirsten loves have... keyboard shortcuts. <laughs> Sorry, go on. Oh, no, I was just going to say, if I have to press more than three keys, like it's probably not going to happen. No. No, I like I like the ones where it's like three keys with your hand and then you have to involve your nose in it, you know. <laughs> Since they all make you a better pianist. <laughs> well, I'm sure that would be entertaining for anyone watching the live stream, yeah. but. <laughs> it really would. Uh, beef saying, I'm terrible about not learning shortcuts. You're not terrible. It's not, you know, it's not mandatory. It's just if, you know. It is hard at first, though, because when you first start using shortcuts, you're kind of slower before you're faster. And that's a bit frustrating. Yeah, know? well, you know, when we first started to learn to walk, you know, imagine how alarming it would be if, if you know, you arrive on the planet as a baby, then you, you make two steps. And next thing you're doing a hundred meter sprint. <laughs> that would be very, very worrying. That's <laughs> like that's like some animals are, are born like they're instantly ready to go. Yeah, but they don't know? want to use Photoshop. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there was a baby. So we live... We live in a farmhouse and we've got a small part of the farm 
um, just a paddock, basically. But the rest of the farm is behind us and occupied by somebody else. They And they rang me last night and said, you haven't got a baby bottle anywhere, have you? Um, I said, no, because they just had another baby lamb. Like a little tiny one. Aww. I'm going to see it later. They're so cute. They are. I love them. Oh my gosh, it's the time of the year. Um, I see them a lot in the in the Netherlands because there's all the, you know, if you go anywhere, basically, there's the farms on si both sides yeah. of the road. You've got sheep everywhere. And it's just that time of the year that all the babies, you see all the babies and they're so precious. Just running and jumping. Gambling and around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's really cute. There's some really tiny ones there at the moment. It's ever so sweet. But anyway, he managed to get, he finally managed to get a bottle, by the way, just in case you're worried about the lamb. We were even going to the point of using latex gloves. <laughs> filled with warm milk um, Sandrine's asking do you ever use the snapshot version the snapshot function to uh to look through versions do you ever use that in the history panel creating a snapshot I don't I don't maybe that's something I should look into mm, that's a useful thing to do sometimes <laughs> you just go nobody does <laughs> <laughs> I do sometimes it's Sandrine interesting does. <laughs> to watch other artists work because sometimes I do. I see people using stuff and I'm like, wow, like, and they're super fluent with it. I'm like, I never use that. That's wild. Mm. You know, they're, they're thinking exactly the same thing about you, though, Maddie. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. You know, they're watching you and going, like, man, I never do that. Maybe I should do that. <laughs> Roger's saying this illustration is looking really cute. Oh, thank you. And, and Sandrine's helping people out telling them where to find the uh, history, the snapshot. Jane uses express keys. Nice. The yeah, and buttons for shortcuts for, that take more than one finger, right? Because that's, that's the thing. Sometimes I hear other instructors say things like that about, you know, oh, you can do this. Not everybody can do that. You know, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's relying, on a, <laughs> relying on a lot of things to assume that everybody you know, has exactly the same abilities because they don't. And it's important to recognize that. You have to be comfortable when you're working, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, Sandrine uses the express keys on our XP pen. Got one of those as well, in fact. One just right on the other side of uh, where I am right now, in a box. Because <laughs> I'm going away for the weekend and I'll take it with me because it's lighter than a Cintiq. Yep, I'm just so using the overlay on, to add a little bit of shadows and highlights for anybody who's wondering what I'm doing. Yeah. Do you ever add like a dodge and burn layer, like a layer filled with neutral gray and then use the dodge and burn tools to? I used to use dodge and burn more like earlier when I was in, um, starting with digital painting. And then for whatever reason, I just fell into preferring like multiply and hmm. overlay or color dodge or something like that. Yeah. But no, I do it on an actual layer. So I fill a layer with okay. neut neutral gray. And then I use dodge and burn over that because it has a slightly different effect. It's not quite cool. as hardcore as, as doing it with the tool itself. I should try that. So mm. you just have a, no what, what do you put the layer mode on? Set it to overlay. Okay. Yeah, because in, in overlay, mm -hmm. mid gray is neutral. So mm -hmm. it has no effect whatsoever. But if you get the dodge and burn tools now that you can affect the tonality underneath. Okay. All right. So I think you've got the smudge tool there. Yeah, you're yeah. right. Let's see. Yeah, that's dodge, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So if you use that, you'll notice that you're lightening the tones underneath. That's right. See that? Yeah. yeah. And then if you if you uh, hold down the Option key or the Alt key, you switch to the Burn tool. Oh, I wonder if I messed with that shortcut and now it doesn't work anymore. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> <laughs> but there we go. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I like that. because I, I just noticed... find it to be useful. Yeah. You know, sometimes um, I noticed when I was using the dodge tool right on, um, you know, rather than on this overlay, but right yeah. on the layer, sometimes it can really sort of desaturate and yeah. it just messes with the saturation. Muddy tones. Yeah. yeah. And you suddenly get these these weird artifact colors popping in, you know, like this, so, <laughs> this crazy, is nice. crazy reds and whatever. But I, I find that technique works. Really cool. Yeah. Mm. I'm going to mess around with this more. I, I might I might adopt this one. Thank cool. you. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Grandma, can you help me with this shortcut, please? <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> My favorite is still the Photoshop one where you have to click four times to select a paragraph and five times to select everything. Yep. Yeah. 
InDesign's like that. It's InDesign a single click, double click, triple click, quadruple click, quintuple click. Amazing. <laughs> And that Impressive. is actually what it is. Five clicks is a quintuple click. Madness. <laughs> I, I learned so much <laughs> in these streams. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, that's great. Quintuple click. Sarah wants a t- animate. Th- this is a task for Yulia Seeger in the chat. Uh, Sarah wants an animated telegram sticker with me hitting the keyboard with my nose. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and Roger's with you on the keyboard, right? Doesn't use uh, doesn't use short keys or anything. Just use the keyboard because it's reliable. Yeah. yeah. Ah, the chat's more. busy, busy, busy. So I'm having to catch up. Go on, sorry. Really? Oh, we're really at the at the end here. So I, I need to just decide on a few things. Um, this mouse here at the top, I feel like there's not enough separation between the background and this mouse. It's, so yeah. I'm I need to decide what is gonna work better to make the background lighter or to make the ba- the mouse lighter, you know? Yeah. So I'm gonna try try making the background lighter first. By the way, Tim's just thrown in another tip for the overlay dodge and burn layer, is huh. which is quite right. You can also paint with black and white to do the same effect. Anything that takes it away okay. from neutral gray will make have an impact on what's going on underneath. Okay, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I think that's better. So then we'll kind of do the opposite too and darken the head and then it should pop. We hope. Love it. I've always made ears on everything, every mammal, lighter than everything else, you know, because we get more, it, they're more transparent aren't they, in other parts of our body. Mm-hmm. The subsurface scattering. Yes. That's so pretty. Go. I love that. Mm. Hmm. Sandrine's saying she uses curved mask layers for dodge and burn. That way she can apply a hue saturation layer to the curves to correct the saturation. Nice. I like it. I'll play with that. I'm going to subscribe to your newsletter, Sandrine. <laughs> <laughs> it is nice to try new um, yeah, new things in your workflow like that. Mm. You never know what's going to be like a new favorite thing to do. Mirko saying this is looking so nice. I love it. Oh, thank you. Just looking now for little last minute um, details I can add, like maybe adding some fluff to the um, ear or, you know, kind of finishing details. I'm just amazed as to how you are consistently on time with everything. The amount of times I don't finish things <laughs> once. <laughs> I am, we're out of time. Bye. Oh, thank you. It's I, I think it's because I did so many of those timed paintings where after a while I kind yeah. of, yeah, I got used to how much time is left and, and what that means. Okay, it doesn't always work. And people that are my streams will know that sometimes like I will also run out of time. But it definitely helps. I'm looking forward to your Domestica course, by the way. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I was. Uh, that was breaking news. I'm excited to to share. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a gouache uh, painting course. So that'll come out in a, it's going to be a few months. We're going to um, work on creating it and then um, shooting it. And yeah, then it'll be here. But I'm going to actually go to um, Madrid to record the 
class. So I'm really excited for that. Cool. Thanks. I'll look forward to seeing that one out there. Thank you. Stuart saying speed studies for the win. Yeah. And Yulia excite, says exciting, presumably about your, your course. And can we come to Madrid too? <laughs> <laughs> Habla español? <laughs> oh, I'm going to need to uh, do a little pre preparation for that. Uh -huh. Even though I lived in South Florida, my, I only know like basic, basic phrases. And also in South Florida, you'll be speaking uh, Latin, Latin American Spanish, which is there are a couple of verbs that you need to be really, really careful of. Uh oh, <laughs> You don't want to say the wrong thing. A very, very different thing in, oh. uh, in mainland Spain. Very <laughs> okay. different. Like, awkward. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just in about the last five minutes now as Maddie's wrapping up. But don't forget, everybody, we're here Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, every week. Uh, tomorrow, I am unclear on the guest. We have Robert here, I think, tomorrow. Uh, with our guest uh, i should have that up on screen didn't sorry uh and sorry and I, I just had that in my ear but i was talking over the top of it michael munch there we go thank you very much tim in my ear <laughs> and don't forget you can also carry on the conversation on our own discord and the link for that is popping into the chat any moment now i hope it's not too long before we have you back on again maddie oh i would love that and definitely i want you in the halloween schedule i'm gonna oh, yes. i'm gonna beg and beg and beg emma <laughs> <laughs> oh yes we could definitely do something fun yes halloween. and dressing up I want yes. you dressing up yeah yeah i love an excuse to get dressed up yes <laughs> Wait, i don't need one i just no <laughs> <laughs> so um sometimes i like to uh, go through the color lookup. I don't know if you guys, for anybody uh, watching, Lots, we go through yeah. that one more time. Yeah, so just the adjustment layers, little half circle icon at the bottom of the layers palette, and then color lookup. And then sometimes I'll just um, go through the drop down and just kind of slide through like this and see if Ooh. anything suddenly looks really cool. Um, oh man, you suddenly had a really 70s vibe on there. Oh, right? 1920s, you're going through the decades. Amazing. It's so cool. And yeah. so let's say you like something, this is a bit intense, but I do like the, um, you know, little contrast boost. So you can lower the opacity. You can also mm. put these on different adjustment layers. So sometimes I will use those to kind of boost things up or, you know, they have those autumn tones and stuff like that. It's really cool. That works excellent. That's something else you can make in Adobe Capture, by the way, uh, Maddie, you can make color LUTs really catch you. yeah you can Absolutely. okay i'm sold i'm gonna try this out gotta give it a go eduardo uh, by the way is saying hello from brazil bon dia hello. Uh, there we are i'm afraid i don't uh, speak much portuguese in fact bon dia is the limit of that and you works pretty much the same way for catalan <laughs> so there you go <laughs> yulia wants halloween every day every month it wouldn't be so special though and it's nice when it's cold And you're getting some shout outs for your stream tomorrow too. Oh, thank you. Yes, that's right. Be streaming tomorrow um, from two to six CEST. Yep. Tim's also thrown out a blend if um, tip out there as oh. well that you can play with blend if that, that would work really well. Blend if is super powerful. Mm -hmm. I don't use it Very enough. Powerful. So I went back and grabbed the line um, from beneath the like merged version just to see if sometimes you know uh you, you can try bringing it back and it gives a stronger impression or sometimes you can do like um filter blur and just kind of blur your mm. line the second layer and it gives like a soft kind of effect that can be really sweet um yeah. i don't know if i like it for this but it's something fun to try but I think yeah, we're pretty I, much there. <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's lovely, Maddie. Thank really you. lovely. You just you really do blow me away with your work. I love it so much. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, oh, it was so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's good fun. 
And you did, you, you, I mean, you managed to finish up the project despite the fact you've got an old crazy guy on the other end going, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's and good energy. Up, good energy. Stirring up, stirring up nonsense in the chat <laughs> about nuns and stickers. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Uh, Sarah, by the way, is just saying, imagine Halloween in July. The costumes would get really uh, revealing. That's what Burning <laughs> Man is for. Come on. <laughs> you ever done Burning Man? No, I haven't. I have some friends that have, and I've seen photos, and I'm like, well, that looks wild. <laughs> I quite fancy doing that. Yeah, I bet it's fun. I might do it next year, just for giggles. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think so. Leave no waste. I love it turn up leave the place exactly as you found it i like it there we go and turned out so very good maddie adorable so cute oh thank you <laughs> <laughs> no, illustration looks great it's mesmerizingly beautiful and charming there you go beautiful Aww. yeah looks amazing everybody loving it thank you so much thank you So we're in about the last minute now. I think oh, we've got a couple more if you need them, Maddie. So no, I'm just fiddling. Um, I yeah. really think it's basically done. It looks yeah. great. Thank you. Really, really great. Well, there we are. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you for having me. <laughs> oh, man, I love having you on here. It's fantastic. Great to see you work. Thanks, everybody, for joining. Thanks, I'm everyone. sure you've enjoyed this. If you've enjoyed it <laughs> half as much as I have, you've had a whale of a time with it really fantastic and in fact the chat saying that uh marvelous amazing uh really enjoyed it everybody's very very grateful of, uh, of you being here and, and sharing your your time and your work with us so thank you so much maddie thank you okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right so that's it for us for us uh for today uh join us again tomorrow uh, with michael and i think robert <laughs> is along with him and uh, yeah thanks again maddie Thank you. And Thank for you now, so cheerio from us. Take care. Bye. 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 Thank you.